Alright, let's take a look at the different resources that our end users need, whether they're at home or in an organization. As you're reading through the chapter, and I want you to think about how these resources are in your life, and then take a look at this. Look at how the resources significantly affect the total cost of an end user computing device for as you as an individual as well as an organization. It's really important to look at those resources that your end users truly need so that you can keep the cost down and not have too much. Not every person needs a DVD burner. It's a, a tool that because of the use of uh, the, the cost reduction in our you know USB thumb drives a lot of people no longer need to use those DVDs to burn so they might just need a reader in a department that you can just plug into they can go check out and plug in at their device if they've gotten some new information from a vendor or something where they just need to view that information it's not provided to them line and the vendor sent them a disk they can go get that disk and just use it to read you might need that uh, bay that would normally be used for a DVD ROM as a caddy for another hard drive because the user needs a lot more storage space. So just keep things in mind. But looking at the basic resources end users need, we know that to be productive, you know, we kind of, you know, this could include hardware, peripheral devices, hardware upgrades and maintenance, operating systems and application software, software upgrades, supplies, data and information, facilities and technical support. That's a lot of information. So if take that in mind as you are looking at either upgrading a system introducing a system all that information needs to be kept in mind let's take a look at basic hardware as it affects our total cost of ownership or you can just think of that acronym as TCO for total cost of ownership for that computer you have your your basic hardware such as your uh, the computer itself, how much RAM is in there, you know, the hard drive, whether it's a solid state hard drive, which is hopefully what you're having your end users go to, or if it's a uh, the size of a hard disk drive, all that has to be computed into your total cost of ownership. So once you take that, you also look at your add-on peripherals. Do you have a, you know, a hard hardware peripheral such as a DVD drive? Do you have a type of scanner in case you know they have to scan documents such as within an HR group that has to scan documents and save those in a computer in a person's file in case there's ever an arbitration or anything like that and they need that documentation. You know, hard you know, if you have any type of maintenance agreements such as, you know, if something goes wrong with this computer within three years, you know, the manufacturer will come in and take care of that. You generally have like a one year or even sometimes a two year general agreement on your computing devices, but sometimes we buy, you know, those extended ones because we think of the life of the computer. How long does the organization want to turn over their computers? And if they're looking at, hey, we want to save costs and we're looking at a three to four year, then we, we buy those add-ons so the manufacturer helps us out with, you know, those issues that go on with the computers. Maybe there's software, you know, costs, you know, if someone needs a CAD program, we gotta look at the thousands of dollars that costs too. And in, in this whole program here of adding up what the total cost of ownership is for that computer. You know, there's different supplies. Maybe someone needs, uh, they have a two-in-one device and they have a touch pen they want so that they can write on their screen as they're putting together a presentation. That's the supply they might need. Um, different technical support. Let's say there's any other type of overhead that you need to add. All of that needs to be included when you're putting together this piece of information for your management team for what the total cost of ownership is going to be on this computer. So just buying the device is not the only part you need to look at. Because you know, the hardware costs may only account for about 20% of the total cost of ownership of this device for its expected lifespan. So if you're going to pitch to do an upgrade in your environment, you take all this into account and the more data you have the, bet, 
the better it is to be able to present your information. A lot of times, every you know, as you know, in organizations, they always want to cut costs. They don't want to think about us in the IT group as having to spend money. They don't want us to be a, you know, a cash cow. So we have to present to them why this is needed. All right, let's take a look here at some different end user application software. Like I said, we probably take this for granted, but we're going to break this down a little bit here and take a look at all the different types of general use application software we have available. Because these are just some of the types of, you know, end user software packages that our end users need for their computers to do their jobs more efficiently. So we have email that we kind of take for advantage now, but electronic mail and instant managing messaging. You might have some type of chat software that's needed in your organization to make your workers more efficient. You know, if a boss wants to send a message to its subordinates from something in a meeting or something that all of a sudden came up that needs done, sending that instant message is a lot easier than trying to get together later with them and do one-on-one -on -one if they're in meetings all day or off-site web browsers. We have many different web browsers that are that we use and that are needed in today's organizations for researching work or, or the various uses of your browser. Word processors such as Microsoft Word. You, know, you might use this or Google Docs because you need to compose those documents for that document processing to get information out there or to present information later on to a potential client or whatever so you have to have these type of word processing software. Now word processors are usually part of an, some type of office suite of different software tools, but it's not always. Sometimes you can buy those as standalone. Another part of that office suite would be spreadsheet software. And because office workers frequently prepare different reports with different numerical data, they need some type of software to put all this into an organized manner as well as present a graphical way of presenting the data with like graphs and, and different charts. So this is where the spreadsheet data comes. Some examples of this would be like Microsoft Excel. We also have different database management. This, this kind of is our software used to maintain client lists, mailing lists, personal records different data like that. Another important one here is planning and scheduling. Now, office workers spend a lot of considerable time planning and scheduling their individual tasks as well as collaborating on team projects. So these software packages for planning and scheduling include personal information to which help businesses or home users maintain an electronic calendar, a to-do list, and an electronic address book. And an example of this is if you use uh, like Microsoft Outlook, it also has a calendar built into it. There are many, many different planning and scheduling ones. If you have a smartphone, you've probably seen that you have a calendar on there, which you can put your different events in or or appointments so that you can be reminded of those. And then your Google Calendar, many, many of those. And they have desktop publishing here. This is software that combines the features of like a word processor and a graphics program. So the software enables users to design, kind of lay out and prepare high quality brochures, newsletters, different manuals. Instead of having this done, you know, by a professional company, they can do a lot of this in-house using this different desktop publishing software. Just an example, this is uh, Microsoft provides one too. I know this is not going to be too hard to remember. Oh, that's right. It's called Microsoft Publisher. And this is a pretty simple program that you can use to make those type of desktop publishing needs be met in an organization. Really simple, but very powerful. As I stated earlier, the primary goal of end user computing is to make workers more productive in their jobs as well as not incurring greater costs if they had didn't have the computer available to them. So even though this is the primary goal, common problems do come with per personal computer use. And some of those common problems include waste of resources, theft of resources, security threats, user mistakes, invasion of privacy, different health problems, computer crime, and abusive users. Now, an example of a waste of resources 
are listed here for you to look at. And we call it waste because whenever a waste occurs, whenever there's money, time, or other resources spent in ways that do not contribute to that increased user productivity and therefore results in a lower productivity. So a user who makes, you know, spends time trying to solve a problem with hardware or software that could be done with a simple phone call, that's a waste for resource. Or if they spend a lot of time, you know, researching for information on the internet that's not ha that doesn't have anything to do with their actual job related activities, that is a waste of resources. You know, if we take a look again here at our figure 1.3, you know, user mistakes. These are just users who carelessly or don't aren't properly trained can easily make mistakes such as inadvertently entering the wrong formula in like a spreadsheet so our calculations aren't correct or maybe someone you know deletes a program because they have the permissions to do so you know now we see that they shouldn't um, that is another user mistake computer crime um, sometimes computers are used to commit intentional crimes such as a worker who has access to sensitive company data in an organization and they try to profit from the sale of that information we also look at theft of resources um, you know sometimes people just simply take the equipment home or even software oh you know I have the disks for installing this CAD program I'm just gonna take it home and put it on my computer license reasons that's not allowed unless you have bought the license to do so but you know just cuz that monitor is you know looks nice at your desk and a lot better than the one you have at home doesn't mean you can swap them out unless you're given permission we can also look at the invasion of privacy a user who has access to confidential information you know maybe they start looking at other people's confidential information only because they have access to it that is a way you know that is a direct invasion of privacy. We also have abusive users. You know, it's this can be very sensitive because an abusive user, you know, it could be someone that like displays offensive material as like a screensaver. And it's visible to coworkers and and obviously they might know that it was gonna be percepted as something that was, you know, offensive, but they do it anyway. So you know, these are difficult challenges for managers to have to manage because of these abusive users.